So we're just going to talk a little bit about the thinning process. On the easternmost side, there's a really thick wall of vegetation. We've got black locusts primarily that are pushing probably 60, 70 feet. And right now, I think it's nine something in the morning. And you can see that the shadow is coming all the way to beyond the edge of the field where the last row of orchard trees is going to be. So the sun will come out and hit the last, well, the first row pretty soon, in about an hour or so. And then the middle row, you know, maybe by 11. And then that last row really doesn't get full sun until in the middle of the summer, we're talking like after the noon hour. So like one, and that's not great. That's, that's actually some, that's a little bit too far in terms of reduction of, uh, of sun for yields on things like stone fruits, apples, um, pears, whatever, that really want the full sun to get a lot of fruit. So we're not gonna go through and cut everything down, but I have been thinning a little bit out. Uh, I'm cutting the black locust a little bit high. Um, it's not a coppice, it's more of a pollard, but I don't really mind if some of the regrowth gets browsed by deer. We do have a lot of deer pressure here. So this one's been cut at waist height. You know, at this time of year, this is a real strain on the tree. It had full leaves out. Um, it had already gone through and flowered. They didn't actually set a lot of seed this year at all. So it wasn't investing energy in that. So that's good. <clears throat> but I highly doubt that this will kill the tree. Um, there's almost basically no chance of that. If anything, we'll probably get a really strong suckering response. So wherever the root of this locust is shallow and close to the surface it's going to send up suckers and we're going to definitely have to be careful of that because cutting the top off like this um there's you know there's like a fire hose of energy coming up of this trunk and if the top is cut off it's gonna it's gonna go somewhere else <clears throat> and come out so <clears throat> i do expect a lot of suckering to come out of this and for that reason i'm gonna push a little bit farther into the into the bush here you can see i've gone a little bit deeper over there and i'm not gonna grade this or anything fancy but i am gonna come and clear this out the undergrowth and have it be a little bit easier to manage um, just because i know that if if we don't get to this next year those shoots will be already you know we'll need a lot of work to get to get them back which so. trees do we take down and which trees do we leave as many of you probably know, black walnut is not really compatible with a lot of tree species. And, you know, there's some people don't really think it's that big of a deal. Some people think it's a huge deal. In my experience, with certain species of trees, it really does slow their growth down, especially when the trees get bigger. This little guy is probably not producing a whole lot of juglone, but once they get a little, you know, three, four, five years more, this thing will probably be putting a significant amount of this juglone, uh, juglone into the soil. And the first row of our trees is going to be about here. And that's definitely within the root zone of that. And it's going to be shedding leaves, branches, root exudates. And so we have to weigh these things out. And it, it's kind of a bummer because peaches are really not a very long lived crop. I mean, it's not only going to be peaches in here, but um, to cut down a walnut, which is a really wonderful tree for lumber, for the actual nuts, and for wildlife, and for everything, to put some shorter-lived, you know, fruit tree that's in many ways not as valuable, it's kind of a tough thing to do. So I'm inclined to leave it, um, but I also know that it will eventually cause pretty significant problems. So these are just some of the things that you have to work through. Uh, thinking, you know, the efficiency of producing fruit and having it be effective um, versus, you know, not wanting to cut trees down that you want to keep there. Um, so I'm still not 100% sure I'm, what I'm going to do with that one, basically. Um, it might be worthwhile to wait until it actually produces some nuts, and then we can see what the quality of the nuts are, because a lot of black walnuts are kind of run-of-the-mill, nothing too special, but some are really special. There's some that taste like grape soda, all kinds of uh, really unique flavors. Another one that I'm going to uh, leave is for sure that big mulberry. That's actually going to be kind of part of the planting. I took uh, a black cherry 
uh, away from it that was blocking the sun. You can see there's some dead branches and that's what happens when they don't get sun right on the branches. So we're gonna open that up. And then you can see I've thinned a bunch of these black locusts out. I think the, the sunlight is kind of dappled now. It's coming through a little bit and there are a couple too many stems maybe over there. So I'll probably take some of those and maybe some of the mid-height trees out and um, and that'll be it. problem with leaving black cherries, which I do like to do, this is uh, Pruna serotina, and um, they do get a lot of black knot, which is transferable to the disease that you get on all of your plums, peaches, apricots, that kind of stuff. And if you have one that has a lot of those like gnarly black knots, it looks like a black knot, on all the stems, and um, this one has a couple you can see here. If you leave trees that have this kind of stuff on them, um, can really cause a lot of problems for your orchard later on. The larger trees, I can just drag them with a truck or a tractor, and I'm gonna bring them up there, right next to where the truck is. There's a nice big staging area. We're gonna bring them all up there, probably let them dry, um, cut limbs off and consolidate into a pile as much as we need but we're gonna let them dry and then do a biochar burn up there. And I'll show you later about my mobile um, biochar cone pit. The cone pit method that we'll talk about later is just digging a really deep cone in the ground and you get all the pyrolysis and very little of the bad off gases. So that really works well, but you don't wanna have to dig a you know huge hole in the ground every time you need to do it in a new place. So I made a mobile one out of an old um, oil tanker. And I just put that on a chain and drag it around wherever I need. And it's not quite as efficient, but it does a pretty good job and it can handle really big stuff. And then you can just have your biochar pit wherever. So we're gonna take all this woody material, drag it up there, let it dry for a while. We'll biochar that later and that will get added into that, ball, that big pile of wood chips that is then going to go into the mulch. 